on slide 35, what is dosage compensation? Now, the amount of gene product that is produced depends on the amount of genes that are active, meaning that if you have two alleles that are active and they produce the same gene product or the same protein, you are going to have twice the amount of protein as if you have only one of the alleles active. Now, in species in which you have XX and XY sex determination, this becomes a problem because if the female has two X chromosomes and the male only have one X chromosome, it would mean that females would produce twice as much protein as the males. And that would indicate a developmental problem for the species. So this is not the case. Also, if you think about the triple X syndrome, that would mean that the person that has three X chromosomes would produce three times more the amount of protein than a man. And so you know that doesn't happen. Now, as I mentioned in the class, early in the embryonic development, when you have a morula of about eight cells, uh, each of the cells will um, determine which one of the X chromosomes that's going to be inactive. Now, this inactivation is totally random, which means that one cell will decide to inactivate one X chromosome, and probably the, next, the cell next to it would inactivate the other X chromosome one being from the mother and the other being from the father. Every cell they will derive from this initial cell that inactivated one X chromosome will have the same X chromosome that is inactivated. So when you look at the pattern of X chromosomes inactivated in a woman, you are actually an amalgamate of cells that have either the X from the mother inactivated or the X from the father inactivated. Now, in order to inactivate one of the X chromosomes, this chromosome will be very much condensed and is stuck to a corner of the nucleus. Now, if you have in mind that figure of chromosomal territories, now remember that in the first lecture, I mentioned that the chromosomes are arranged in a nucleus in a specific manner. They are not just dropped in there in a random situation or in the random locations. So the main idea that I mentioned was that when the chromosomes are close to the outside of the nucleus, when they are close to this session that is closer to the envelope, these chromosomes are inactive. And when they are close to the center of the nucleus, they become highly active in these places is where you have and this is where you find the nucleoli, which are places of high level of transcription. Now notice that when the X chromosome gets inactivated, it gets highly condensed and becomes a bar body. Now look where this bar body is located. It's very close to the nuclear envelope. This is only the nucleus, okay? It's not the whole cell. You find the bar body close to the nuclear envelope. And when you have a situation in which you have a triple X, you will find two bar bodies. And again, they will be close to the nuclear envelope, which is a place for low transcription level and for high level of suppression of gene expression. Again, if you have the, a four X on a multiple X chromosomes uh, syndrome, you have three of those X chromosomes that are inactivated again close to the nuclear membrane. Now you may ask why is it that having three axes or four axes in a multiple X syndrome, why is it harmful if the extra chromosomes get inactivated? Now we don't quite know the answer but one of the possibilities is that these X chromosomes that are inactivated, those bar bodies, are not completely inactive. The idea is that about 15% of those chromosomes uh, could still be active. So that's why the imbalance in the total level of proteins of these active parts of the bar bodies would throw off a balance in a normal situation and it would cause the syndrome symptoms. Now, how does 
when X chromosome gets inactivated? Well, this 1X chromosome will express one specific gene that is called the X inactivation center. This X inactivation center produces a transcript, or meaning an RNA, that is called the X inactive specific transcript. Now, this product of the XIC is not a protein. It never gets translated to protein. Now, remember that one of the major functions of the nucleus is to separate transcription from translation. So this is one of the fundamental differences between the prokaryotes and the eukaryotes. And in the prokaryotes, you have transcription and translation happening at the same time. But in eukaryotes, you have extra level of control, that is the nuclear membrane. So when you have a gene product that is produced only in the nucleus, it's not going to be a protein, it's just some form of RNA. Now this gene product is thought to coat the X chromosome that's going to be inactive. Now what that probably does is that it prevents acetylation of the histones and without getting the histones acetylated you coil up the DNA in a very tight fashion. At the same time this coating of the X chromosome will induce methylation and methylation will further inhibit any gene expression that is present. There are many things we don't know about this gene inactivation mechanism. One of these things is how does the production of this schist gene product, how does it know which chromosome to inactivate and why doesn't it get around the good X chromosome or the chromosome that is going to be expressed? And also, when you have a pattern of X activation and the cell divides, how do the daughter cells know which of the X chromosomes was the one inactivated in the first place? This random inactivation of one X chromosome is also known as the Lyon hypothesis. And that hypothesis is saying that when you have a female that is um, heterozygous for some form of X-linked gene, it will only express one of the alleles in one specific cell. It doesn't mean that it does not express the other allele, it means that one cell will only express one of those alleles and probably a neighboring cell would express the other allele. And this is the end of chapter 4, so next series of clips will be on chapter 5.